Did you realize that the great majority of hypothyroid cases, like 90% up to 95%, is Hashimoto's? That's interesting. Let's talk about first what Hashimoto's is, and then, then we'll talk about the why. You have the hypothalamus up here in the brain, that's the master gland that then talks to the pituitary, which is like the middleman, and down to the thyroid. So we have this communication network, it's a feedback loop. So you have the pituitary that releases thyroid stimulating hormone, okay? And that has two purposes. One is to tell the thyroid to release more hormone and to increase the growth of the thyroid itself. So what's happening is either there is a uh, low T3 or T4 going on somewhere in the body that is failing to send back signals to the pituitary and hypothalamus, causing these two to tell the thyroid to make more hormone, okay, and get bigger, or there's an immune problem, which is creating inflammation, which is interfering in this feedback loop coming from antibodies that are actually attacking the thyroid itself. So Hashimoto's is an autoimmune condition, which means that there are cells that are attacking the thyroid, and that keeps the thyroid inflamed. So Hashimoto's is more of an immune problem than a thyroid problem. And the best way to test for it is to get a test that's called thyroid peroxidase antibodies, TPOAB, or TGAB. So you can actually have these tested, and if it shows positive, then chances are you have a Hashimoto's problem. Now, the three symptoms for this are stressed, anxiety, depression, but you can pretty much have any thyroid symptom. But what's weird is when you have Hashimoto's, you can also have symptoms of hyperthyroidism. And some people that have Hashimoto's hypothyroidism don't really present with those symptoms that you normally see in hypothyroidism. Maybe they're really, really thin, they don't have problems with their hair, but they may have these symptoms right here. Now, sometimes this condition takes a long time to develop. You may show positive for these, but not have any symptoms for 10, 15 years. So it takes a while to develop, but really it's an immune problem. So the big question is, what is causing this, okay? What's behind this? Well, there's a couple interesting things. Number one, there's a high percentage of people with Hashimoto's that develop it three to eight months postpartum, okay? And there are five to eight times more women that have this condition than men. So what does this tell us? This tells us that there's a problem with estrogen, okay? Now, what is it about estrogen that's related to this? Estrogen is a very, very powerful antioxidant. This is one of the reasons why women live longer than men because this acts as an antioxidant and they have less free radicals in their body. And many times postpartum, which is after pregnancy, she's gonna have lower amounts of estrogen and that could create a weakness and set her up for getting this autoimmune condition. Another reason why um, you may develop an autoimmune condition, even to the thyroid, which involves gluten, because gluten tears up the colon lining and it allows for a leaky gut allows for proteins to get into the immune system and create a reaction, and you could actually develop an autoimmune just from that. Um, a couple other things that contribute to this problem, a zinc deficiency. Zinc is one of the most important trace minerals for the immune system to protect the person from all sorts of immune problems. If you're deficient in zinc, your risk of getting sick go way up. Your chances of having viruses come out of remission go up as well. Also, low vitamin D. Vitamin D is involved in the immune system. So if you're low in vitamin D, you're more at risk for Hashimoto's. So we have a combination of potentially low estrogen, which means low antioxidants, and low nutrients, and maybe something that triggered it here. But the last and most important piece of this puzzle is selenium. Selenium has a tendency to reduce these antibodies. It also is a very powerful antioxidant and it helps the conversion from T4 to T3, the active form of thyroid hormone. So it can really benefit someone with Hashimoto's. And I would recommend taking um, right around 300 micrograms per day of selenium for sure. Now, you don't necessarily need iodine unless you're deficient, okay? So get a test for that because if you take too much iodine, that could aggravate things. This is not really an iodine deficiency problem. 
The other thing that's really, really important to do is, of course, healthy keto, and especially intermittent fasting. Why? Because when you do intermittent fasting and you lower your carbs, you drop inflammation. And if you can get rid of the inflammatory response from Hashimoto's, you get rid of the complications from Hashimoto's and you can actually feel much, much better. All right, so go ahead and try these things and comment below and thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.